Hey, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got here. Well, luckily for you, that's chapter one. A few days ago, I was just a regular guy, biking to work because I love the environment, working for a small California nonprofit, and wearing really classy cardigans. But then I had the opportunity of a lifetime, spending a week as head intern and gear model for Connor Gallagher Productions. Who's Connor Gallagher? Only one of the most talked about up and comers in the ocean video world, making viral videos and hanging out with some of the ocean elite. I mean, look at him, just casually hanging out with Sylvia Earle. Sylvia freaking Earle. I met Connor before all the fame, when we both lived as hobos on Catalina Island. Well, we were marine science teachers, which is basically one step up from being a hobo. What Connor didn't know was being my friend's intern wasn't going to be enough. And as soon as I could hatch a plan, it would be me hanging with the ocean elite. But first things first, I had to get to Cabo Pomo. The reality of the trip hit me when we were 15 km's away. Connor assured me that km stood for kinda miles, because they were kind of like miles, but not really. The paved road turned to dirt, and finally I could see it. Cabo Pomo. But why? Well, that's chapter two. Cabo Pomo is one of the ocean's greatest success stories. Once acknowledged by Cousteau and Steinbeck for its diversity and abundance of marine life, by the 90s the waters have been overfished and overexploited. Today, it's a national marine park and a world heritage site. But the protection didn't start with the government. It started with the people. A small village of 200 made the decision as a community to protect their home by switching their focus from commercial fishing to ecotourism. Once given the opportunity to recover, the reef rebounded from one fish to two fish to wow wow wee wow mama mia, an estimated 450% increase in the fish population. Their efforts were awarded as ocean enthusiasts from all over the world came to see Capo Pomo's beauty and abundance. People were willing to pay the locals good money to show them around. What kind of people? People like us. But who is us? And why are we here? Chapter 3, y'all. At the end of the day, we were just three friends. Or an Espanol, Trace friends. And our jobs were clear. First, there was Connor. He was the brains and the leader of the operation. Then we had Eric, the muscles with years of experience in the open ocean. And then there was me. I was brought along to carry bags and model some dive gear for Connor. But as my shirt clearly implied, I wasn't there to be number two. I was there to be number one. And I'd hatched a plan. Turns out, being a famous videographer didn't look that hard. All I had to do was take one great viral video, and I would be the one hanging with Sylvia Earle. To make my plan even easier, we were spending a day in La Paz with the most lovable animal on the planet, the whale shark. The whale sharks of La Paz are another great example of sustainable ecotourism. I mean, who wouldn't want to swim with these gentle giants? These sharks are so cool, even fish live on these fish. Whale sharks are massive. They're friendly, and they're covered in polka dots. A viral video should be easy to obtain. But then, disaster struck. It was starting to feel like every time I was about to take the perfect shot for my viral video, either Connor or Eric would jump in the way. Is it possible that they knew about my secret plan? Or were they just trying to get awesome videos of their own? Only time would tell. On top of that, I still had all my responsibilities as an intern and as a scuba model. I was starting to find out 
It's not easy being a model, intern, and famous videographer. And that's what Chapter 4 is all about. I tried to work on my videos any time that the guys were distracted, but my other jobs were making it tough. Being an intern for Connor Gallagher Productions wasn't as lavish of a role as I'd expected. Plus, I thought modeling scuba gear would be the easiest part of my journey. And boy was I wrong. I had noticed that Connor had only been complimenting me on shots that had me wearing a backpack or a piece of my leg, or once focusing on the fins, but never the shots with a mask. I knew there was a problem, but I never expected it to be my face. Above the water, I was crushing the model game. Like seriously, that's some grade A prime beefcake. But once I was under the water, I was a grade A prime beef mistake. Every time I thought I was doing some GQ blue steel eyes, my face was actually doing this. <laughs> Clearly, I didn't have a future in modeling, and I didn't want a future as Connor's intern. My last hope was to film something spectacular, become a famous videographer, and befriend the ocean elite. Like any amazing story, we've been introduced to the characters, we've been presented a source of serious conflict, and now we're just itching for a resolution. Well folks, I filmed my heart out any chance I had and I spend countless hours afterwards researching what the public likes and what makes a perfect viral video. And now I proudly present to you the perfect viral video. Did it. See you soon, Sylvia Earl.